Microsoft's Xbox Series and Xbox One consoles can do a heck of a lot more than just play Xbox games. They can emulate some of the greatest video game systems of the past. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play your favorite PlayStation 1 games using DuckStation with a twist. 900% video upscaling to a full glorious 4K resolution. Fire up your Xbox and your PC. It's time to play some PlayStation games on the Green Company's console, and we're starting now. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell to become part of the conversation. And check the video description for the links featured in the video and the latest show notes and updates. And be sure to watch to the end of the video for an important bonus tip about DuckStation that you don't want to miss. Okay, if you've never dipped your toe into the waters of getting a developer account, don't worry. As Ryan would say from Screen Rants, Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. I've got the instructions for how to get this done through Microsoft linked for you in the description below. And a developer account is good for the Xbox One S, Xbox One X, Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, Windows, and Windows Phone devices. After you've secured your developer account access with Microsoft, you'll need to add dev mode to your Xbox console. You can access the search function on your controller by pressing the Y button. From here, just use the on-screen keyboard to type in dev mode. Then use the D-pad to come up to where it says Xbox dev mode and select it with the A button. This opens up the Microsoft Store on your console and takes you directly to the dev mode download page. Select get with the A button to download it to your console. Once the download is complete, you can go back to the home screen and launch dev mode by selecting it with the D-pad and opening it with the A button. The dev mode software will give you a welcome screen and tell you to review the upcoming information, and this is very important. Select next with the A button, and it gives you this before you begin message, and this is very important. Let me zoom in for just a moment so you can see. You need to make sure each of these are included in your processes. First, make sure that your development PC is running the latest version of Windows 10. You need to install Visual Studio on your Windows 10 PC, and I have the link for it for you in the description below, and it's a free download from Microsoft directly from their site. And also, make sure that your console has at least 5 gigabytes of available storage. Press the A button on the next box to continue, and you'll get a code that you're going to need to put into your Microsoft developer account in order to register your Xbox console with your account. Your code is going to be different than the one that you see here. Also, make note of this web address. Although the registration code is different for each console, the address is exactly the same for everybody. It's aka.ms slash activate Xbox. Also, take note that this registration code is only good for a short time, so make sure that you document it down and promptly go to the website and register your Xbox. Otherwise, you have to repeat this process to get a new code. When you type in the aka.ms slash activate Xbox web address, it takes you directly to your Microsoft partner account and directly to the page where you can add your activation code for your Xbox Series S or Series X. Click the plus button on the right and then select enter activation code. You do remember the activation code your console gave you, right? Good. Type it in right here. And when you're done, come down to submit and click on it. It'll add your console to the list of approved devices in your developer account. Then back on your Xbox console, you'll be asked if you want to switch to developer mode. Obviously you do. Select switch and restart by pressing the A button. When your Xbox restarts, you'll see the typical splash screen logo, but this time, instead of going to the home menu, you'll be in developer mode. If this is your first time seeing an Xbox console in developer mode, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through the steps right now to get you up and running. You'll need to add your developer account into the developer app. Come over to Add Existing and select it with the A button. Use the game controller and the on-screen virtual keyboard to add your email address and password, and then select Add with the A button. After a moment of deep contemplation, it will add your account right here. Use the D-pad on the controller to come down to Remote Access Settings and select it with the A button. Small text again here, let's zoom in. Make sure that Enable Xbox Device Portal is checked here, it should be by default. And optionally you can require authentication, but also make note that only consoles that are on your immediate network will be accessible. So if it was your evil diabolical plan to employ a super secret government agency to hack into my Xbox Series S and find out exactly what games I'm playing on my console, yeah, it's not going to work. Alright, once you're done with all of this, just come down to close and select it with the A button. Or you can just press the B button to go back. 
Then look in the bottom right corner and find this web address. You're going to need this information to type in in just a moment into a web browser in order to connect to your Xbox Series S or X through your dev account. And just like magic, now you know that you can use this process with both Windows 10 and the new Windows 11. Input the IP address that you copied from your Xbox console into your browser window and press enter on the keyboard when you're done. This will take you to your Xbox via IP address through your browser. In the navigation pane on the left, select File Explorer from the list of choices. This next process will help you connect your Xbox to your PC over the network to use it as a network drive, which will basically make it like you can just connect to it to any hard drive or external storage. It's amazing. First, navigate to Browse in the top right corner of the window and click on it. At the top of the window, you'll see an IP address and a folder name that you need to double click on and copy. This is the direct path to the storage on your Xbox. Go to the search bar inside File Explorer and then delete out whatever's in there, probably either Quick Access or this PC. Then paste the information that you got from the Xbox into this bar. Press the Enter key when you're done and you'll see a pop-up window. You might remember earlier having seen username and password credentials when you grabbed the IP address and folder information from the Xbox. Grab that same username and copy it. Then in that pop-up window, paste that same information in the username block. Back in the Xbox connection window, grab the password information that you see there and then copy it. Then back at the network security pop-up window, paste the password information here. Navigate down to remember my credentials and click on it. Then click on the highlighted OK button in the bottom of the pop-up window. Now you'll have access to the development files folder on your Xbox so that you can copy over supporting files for DuckStation or any other applications you wish. If you stop here, you'll have to go through this process every single time you want to connect to the storage on your Xbox to transfer over games and other content. Let's map the network drive so that it can be permanently connected in Windows. Locate this PC in the navigation on the left and right click on it. Come down to more options and then scroll back up to map network drive and click on it. To get the information you need to map the network drive, go back to the developer access website for your Xbox. All of that same connection and login information will be right there. Highlight and copy that same IP and folder location information that you previously copied over. Back at the map network drive screen, select the drive letter that you want to use to represent your Xbox. Since it's an Xbox Series S, I'm using drive letter S. Then click the box next to folder and paste in the information that you copied over from the Xbox developer website. Make sure reconnected login is selected, then come down to finish and click on it. The network drive is mapped, but every time you click on the map network drive, you're gonna have to re-enter your user ID and password. Let's fix that too. You might not have noticed it previously, but there's actually a command string at the bottom of that same window with the IP address and your login and password credentials. Move the cursor down to that command string Double click on it and copy it. You can close out File Explorer or minimize it. Click on the search function within Windows and in the search bar, type in CMD and press enter. This will pull up the Windows command prompt. All you have to do here is just paste over that command string that you copied over from the Xbox development dashboard. This will permanently add your credentials to that map network drive. Now, every time that you go to the map network drive, it will automatically log it in for you. No credentials required, automatic reconnection. Now comes the fun part. We get to download the files that you need to set everything up on your Xbox. DuckStation is hosted on the GitHub and I have it linked for you in the description below. The Xbox file format is somewhat unique to other systems. To install this file under the development system, you need to grab the .appx file shown here. You also need system BIOS files in order for this to work correctly on your Xbox. Let's just take the taboo off of this for a moment. They're hosted on Internet Archive. I've got it linked for you in the description below. Scroll down on the page until you see the zip file download and click on it to get the BIOS files you need. And if you don't have access to an optical drive to back up your original PlayStation 1 games, these folks might be able to help you out. If you have any concerns about downloading these files or any other online activity, get a VPN. I use NordVPN, they did not sponsor this video, but I use them and trust them. They use encrypted connections to protect your privacy online, and they have a no logs policy. You can sign up with Nord with the link in the description below and get a huge discount. Back at the Xbox development website, and with your Xbox still connected, click the green add button. 
You can drag and drop duct station on this box or just click choose file. Then from the list of choices in the pop-up window, go to your downloads folder and double click duct station. Then click the green next button to continue. In the next window, you'll be asked to install any dependencies. There are no dependencies for duct station. Just roll down to the start button and click on it to install duct station to your Xbox. Once the process is completed, click the green done button to continue. At this point, you're done with the Xbox development website. Go back to your Windows desktop and open File Explorer. And if you're not already there, go back to your network locations and double click on the development files network drive. Inside this development files folder, you'll see a Windows apps folder. Double click into it. Folders aren't labeled intuitively in here, but the one that you're looking for starts with 57BC. Double click into it and that is your duct station folder. Let's keep your game section really well organized. Right click, select show more options, then pick new and folder. Let's create a new folder here and call it games so that you have a singular folder to put your game files in and keep things well organized. All right, let's get your games and your BIOS files copied over. Go back to your downloads folder where you have your BIOS files. And in this case, I've already got a game copied over into that folder, Parappa the Rapper. Drag and select the BIOS folder in any games that you want to copy over, right click on them and copy them. Then navigate back to the duct station folder. In this case, I'm just going to hit the back arrow since it's the last folder I previously visited. Then you can right click inside the duct station folder and paste those folders right here. Just to keep things tidy inside duct station, I'm going to grab the Parappa the Rapper game and drag and drop it directly into the games folder that we just created. And if you get this message while you're trying to move your folders around inside your Xbox, everything's fine. Click the OK button to continue. This step is optional, but I'm going to relabel this PSX folder as BIOS to make it easier to find when it comes time to set up the path that duct station needs to find it. You're done with File Explorer, and you're actually done with your PC at this point. You can close out File Explorer and transition over to your Xbox for the remainder of this guide. In the console's developer mode, you'll now see that Duck Station is listed in the list of games and apps. Use the D-pad to scroll down to Duck Station and press the View button. It's a small button to the left of the Xbox Connect button on your controller. Use the D-pad to scroll down to View Details and select it with the A button. By default, Duck Station will be set as an app, which actually restricts and limits some of its access to the system resources. To change this, scroll down to App, select it with the A button, and then scroll up to Game and select that with the A button. For this change to take effect, press the B button to go back. You'll need to restart your console. Use the D-pad to move the green highlight to restart console and select it with the A button. This will restart your console in dev mode. And at the confirmation prompt, select Restart Now with the A button. Once your console restarts, you'll be able to launch Duck Station for the first time. Move the green highlight down to Duck Station and select it with the A button to launch it. At first start, you'll need to tell Duck Station where your ROM and game files are located. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down to Settings and select it with the A button. To navigate through the Settings menu, you can use the shoulder buttons on the top right and top left of the controller to go through the different sections. Use the right shoulder button to navigate over to Game List Settings. Then use the D-pad to scroll down and then back up until you get to Add Search Directory. And you'll be taken to a list of folders that probably doesn't match the location you have your content. Scroll down to Parent Directory and press the A button repeatedly until you get all the way back to the list of drive choices. What I'm going to show in this example is it actually has the same drive that I mapped with the network earlier, which is the S drive, which represents internal storage on the Xbox Series S. Highlight the location you've created and select it with the A button. For this search function, we're going to be finding the Games section. Scroll down with the D-pad until you get to the Games folder that you previously created and select it with the A button. Once again using the D-pad, move the highlight down until you get to Use This Directory and select Use This Directory with the A button. Now that the Games location is established, we need to establish where the BIOS files are located. To do that, use the right shoulder button and continue scrolling until you see the BIOS settings section. Use the D-pad to move the highlight down until you get to BIOS directory and select BIOS directory with the A button. Just like with your game content, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to parent directory and press the A button repeatedly until you get back to the list of drive choices. And once again, I've got these saved on the S drive. 
but select your drive with the A button. Remember how we renamed the BIOS folder earlier? Super easy to find here. Scroll down to BIOS, select it with the A button, and then come down to use this directory with the D-pad and select that with A. Press the B button to go back to the main menu for Duck Station. To launch a game, use the D-pad to scroll down to Open Game List and select it with the A button. In this case, I've got Parappa the Rapper installed. I'm going to use the D-pad to move the highlight down to the game and select it with the A button to launch it. The game's going to initially launch in the standard 240p progressive mode. But the promise of this video was to play your favorite PS1 games in this emulator in full 4K resolution, and I'm not going to let you down. Here's how that's done. From inside the game, press the View button. It's that small button to the left of the Xbox Connect button on your controller. Then use the D-pad to scroll down through the list of choices until you get to Settings, and select Settings with the A button. This will take you back to the familiar settings menu you were in before. Use the right and left shoulder buttons to change the tab setting until you see the Enhancement Settings tab. The very first listing in the menu is called Internal Resolution Scale. Select that with the A button and you'll get a pop-up menu. To go all the way up to 4K resolution, use the D-pad to scroll down through the list of choices until you see the one for 9X. Then select it with the A button. Press the B button to go back, then press the B button again to save those settings, and you'll be in full glorious 4K resolution. And here's that bonus tip I promised you, how to play multi-disc games in the emulator. Press the View button on the Xbox controller, then you can move the highlight down with the D-pad to Change Disc. Select Change Disc with the A button, and you can swap out disc on your multi-disc games. At this point, you've also done all the heavy lifting to install RetroArch on your Xbox. Check out this video here and linked in the description to find out how it's done.